This is Remote Ruby. Have you any remote idea to the meaning of the word? Do I start? How does this work? I think we have to reintroduce you. Yeah. I think you just start there. Hi, my name is Jason, and I used to be on Remote Ruby. You're a recovering podcaster. (laughs) To be fair, that month where we recorded all those episodes together, it was too much. I think it's a Wes Anderson film. It's called Ball Rocket, and it's got Owen Wilson and Luke Wilson. And Luke Wilson has had this breakdown and he's recovering or whatever. And this girl is so, what happened? And he said, well, one day we were at the lake and so-and-so asked me if I wanted to jet ski or swim or something like that. And he said, not only do I not want to answer that question, I realized I never wanted to answer any water sports question ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel about Ruby podcasts. Everything Ruby right now. So imagine how everyone who listens to so, you yeah, welcome about back. my voice again. Imagine how people everywhere are feeling. My about man, it. what it are we even going to talk about? You went on every other Ruby podcast yeah. before you got here. <laughs> I've got opinions. You ask me questions, I will give you the answers. They may not be correct <laughs> answers, but they will be answers. The and then I saw one today with Ufu, but he didn't want to come yeah. to ours. Ufu wants to see you without me. He wants to treat you to just his personality without mind getting in the way. I like your personality, Andy, for what it's worth. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> nah, 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 <laughs> no, no. I'll never forget the time someone called me Andy as a child and my mother snapped on them. No, his name's Andrew. Oh. And ever since that day, no one has ever called me Andy. Yeah, it didn't work. I tried it. It didn't fit. I loved it. <laughs> I hope it stays. <laughs> I had an ex-girlfriend who called me Drew, but... No, most people just call me Andrew. A lot of people call me by my last name, Mason. Really? Yeah. Because I've never heard anyone call you that. Drew Bragg calls me Mason every time, every day. Andrew Bragg? Andy Bragg? (laughs) Yeah, Andy Bragg. (laughs) (laughs) He's probably fuming right now as this enters his ears. Came here today, Andy, because you were here. And I bless you, sir. I got online this morning and I told my boss, I said, I'm going to take an hour out of my day because Andy is here. And he said, you. So, yeah. Understandable. Uh, Jay- Jamie doesn't like <laughs> me very much. So. No. so, okay. I think the last time we talked to you is if you include that episode at Rails World where we sat down in a, play, a that. corner. And that was the last time we talked to you. Since then, you started doing some Ruby Central things. And yeah. I just want to talk about that for a little bit. Like, I'm sure that's what you've been talking about every other podcast. The ones that you like more that you booked first. And... I kind of want to get the inside scoop on how this all came about. So my understanding is I'm the first non-Ruby Central board member to organize one of these big Rails slash Ruby conferences. And of course, it makes sense because I live in a completely different country. And it boils down to Ufuk joined the board of Ruby Central late last year and was set up to co-chair and... His co-chair, who was also on the board, had to drop out for personal reasons. And he sort of asked, can anyone on the board spare the time? And I think there was not an appetite amongst them to do it. Where A couple of them had done previous couple of big events. And so he asked around and said, who could do this? And they went, well, Andy doesn't like his spouse very much. So he could take on her disappointment and volunteer to help out. So yeah, that's broadly speaking. Ufuk called me saying, can I pick your brains about RailsConf? And I said, like, yeah, you can pick my brains about RailsConf for half an hour. No problem at all. And five minutes in, he's like, do you want a co-chair? And I was like, not really. That man pulled one over on you. He did. It's a hostage situation. It was um, his charm. Yeah, he's too charming. You think for you're own. charming. I don't think I'm charming. You're confusing British with charming there. All British I'm not are confusing. charming Those are the us. same. Oh, gee, that's fair enough. I do struggle because Jamie lives in Ireland, but he's not from Ireland. And now when I hear someone with an Irish accent, it startles me because I'm like, wait a second, where is that from? Are they charming? Yes, they are. The no. Irish are very charming. Damn. No. Whoa. We've uncovered a secret anti-Irish sentiment within the No, podcast. no, no. It's not <laughs> anti- No, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes. I don't view them as charming the same way I view y'all. Like, it was cute when y'all tried to have, like, us as colonies yeah. and stuff. This man's on a freedom ride right now. <laughs> but when I think of Irish people, I think of Jamie. So I just think of quiet, reserved Stonehenge. Is Stonehenge in Ireland? No, that's ass. Okay. Uh, well, Can we take a moment for a colonization 
and cute in the same sentence because I'm pretty yeah. sure I have spent the last 50 years as a country just apologizing to people for being massive shitheads for the previous multiple centuries. It's only when I lived in oh, Singapore. Andrew, I was a bit like, uh, yeah. We lost him. This is unfortunate because I wanted to know what other misinformation about history and geography <laughs> this man had. But maybe this is like a greater being putting a stop to this. I, I'm be. looking forward to a really four hour history podcast as presented by Andrew Mason. I think there's a market for that. You're with Ruby Central for this conference. Yes. Right. Like specifically I'm, I'm not right on now. the board. I'm there lending whatever I can to make this thing a success. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about conferences. I didn't have the best time in Atlanta at RailsConf. And I don't want to get necessarily into the reasons why. But then I went six months later to Rails World, where it was polarizing how exciting it was. Like it was a stark difference. And so then Rails World announces they're going to be in Toronto. North American, that is much more accessible for me. Subsequently, RailsConf is in Detroit, and Detroit is also accessible to me and not close, but in American terms, Toronto and Detroit are close. And when I found out you and Ufuk were part of this thing, all of a sudden I thought, now I have to figure out how to go to both of these things. Yes. And so help me convince my wife that I need to go to two Rails conferences in a geographically similar location in the same year. So I kind of think about these things as a chance to get out from the day-to-day. I wrote a very self-serving blog post last week where I invited people to go to conferences that I was organizing and suggested that that was a good idea. But I actually believe it too. A lot of my best professional relationships and actually best personal relationships, I've got friends I've met at these things. And for me, they sort of act as annual punctuation for my career. Obviously, I think there's value in the talks and value in the workshops and value in the hallway track. But I think the real thing for me is the relationships that you're building, you don't understand the value at the time. You only know from looking backwards. And I think once every six months is not too bad to get out and see actual human beings outside of your own house. I mean, we're all recording from our own houses where we all work. I actually do have an office in town that I do get to see my coworkers in person. But it's like an offsite for the people you know on the internet rather than your workmates. That's the real emotional part of it for me. Also, I'm going to make this really, really good. I really want to make this RailsConf really good. We've kind of mixed up the format a little bit. Ufuk and I have got relatively strong opinions about what's going in. The uh, CFP closed yesterday, so we're about to go into ranking the talks and I will be taking a, not a strong hand, but I'll certainly be leading folks through. I want to help the speakers. We're not going to have as many speakers this year. It's not going to be ram-packed. It's going to be three tracks. So hopefully there will be time for me and other folks like me who've got speaking experience to review talks like I do for Brian Ruby. So every talk for Brian Ruby the folks get time with me to run through the talk. And so I'll give them feedback on it and multiple times. And so that really helps give, particularly if it's one of your first talks, and even if you're experienced, like it gives you a sense that talk is going to be a success and it's the most beneficial to the people in the audience. And I want to provide a bit of that to the RailsConf speakers. So yeah, hopefully it's similar in the good ways and different in better ways is my plan for this year's RailsConf. I'm glad to hear the less number of tracks. That was a little bit overwhelming. That's been RailsConf since I've started going, though. It's always been that many tracks and a ton of talks. There's kind of a balance. The ones I did want to see were like butted up next to each other. And there were a bunch of times there were just a lot of talks. They didn't interest me. And that kind of made for an uneven conference experience. I'm not pitting Rails World against Ruby Central, but in contrast to like Rails World, mm. where there were two tracks and there was always at least one talk that was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. It was a different dynamic for me. It was a much more focused program. Yeah. You know, two tracks versus six, seven, eight at some points, including workshops, which I know people love to go to Rails Conf and go to the workshops and get that educational thing. I know Chris has run workshops. Yeah. Last before. year was the first one I had ever done, actually. Oh, okay. I presume you've um, done more. No. 
just talk very presumptuous really, of you andy i mean man's I, an educator I, I, my like thinking was like if i'm gonna do a talk or workshop at least the talk gets recorded so people can experience it afterwards because the workshops didn't get recorded so it was kind of like only for the people in the room why well, do you remember we walked into the room and no one's there to help us set up the microphones or computer and stuff and we we're just kind of like uh guess we'll spend five minutes figuring this out ourselves looking not professional in front of everybody that's some of the other stuff that i'm bringing from my experience of brighton and who fucks mine's opinion on the event is that it may not be quite as shiny as rails world because that was some level of shiny that there may not be an entire wall of bright light behind you as you speak there will be support for the speakers we've got liaison something they did at rubyconf in san diego as they had speaker liaison so there was someone you could just go to if you needed a thing as a speaker so improving that experience having been a speaker at ruby central event and I think it very much depended on the venue, actually, over the years. Some venues did some of that and some of the venues much worse. And it was very dependent on where you landed and the local state regulations around union rules and stuff that I just don't understand. And thank goodness we have events person who speaks that language. You can get in trouble for picking up and moving a sofa. It's bonkers. Mm. So yeah, trying to address those things by drinking the scope. Not so it doesn't feel like there's lots of opportunity to go to, but to focus the program and we're also focusing the program with one day of talks one day of hack day one day of talks so we're actually making uh. in the conference for sitting down with your laptop out of your day-to-day -day, inspired by the day before work on a project join a project start something new take something from the first day stick it into a work project spike it so yeah try and make it really tactical and useful and leave a space for that hallway track whilst you stare at your keyboard kind of thing that we all like to do because we're nerds, right? And that was something they did at RubyConf and they did it on the first day, apparently in San Diego. I wasn't there, but people really liked it. So I think it's definitely something we want to take into this year's event. Yeah, um, I remember like Ruby Midwest back in 2010 or something, went to the talks that day and then we like hung out at a table and I think Tenderlove and several other people were there. And it was just so much fun to like the stuff that you learned that day then immediately try to put it into practice instead of the next week or whatever after you travel home and then it's a weekend and then eh, stuff that I was excited about last week kind of isn't near as exciting because I don't remember it all. Then you got to wait a month for the videos to come back out or something, rewatch it and then you're busy and it seems like a great way to like take the fuel of the excitement, and the energy right then and like here, now you can go do something with it. It's an encouraging thing, which I like. I think there's also a value there for sponsors. There's a day where if you're a tools sponsor, then you can say, hey, do you know what? We'll go and wander around the hack room and help people install our stuff if they want to try it out. That yeah. to me is hugely valuable rather than... Tears some socks. I like that y'all are doing it on the second day. I do want to go back to something Jason said earlier because I'm going to up the ante a little bit. I don't want this to sound like I'm criticizing a specific person because that's not what's happening. But the past few years, God. seems to be a lot of churn at Ruby Central, which is understandable. It's a nonprofit. We understand that. But the conferences themselves have seemed to take a hit in quality. And it seems like the talks aren't talks that are relevant to that year. It's almost like they're from like a year ago. A lot of the talks that like I see are like, oh, my talk didn't get announced. This is what it would have been like. Oh, well, that would have been a great topic to talk about now. That's something that's current and everyone's interested, not this other thing. And there's been lack of water, not great places to I, sit. I, or I, can, I can promise hydration because we're right he's, by the river. So he's the know. thirsty it, guy, remember? I am thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I care who water about God, I'm going to have to keep you separated from Chris's calves in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely promise you water. I'm going like, to strap water bottles I mean, my so calves. I visited the venue because I felt like that was important so I could sort of walk the halls and all that. And we did talk about making sure that everyone was hydrated. Nice. And to be fair, the Ruby Central folks who were at the last event are traumatized when you talk about water because they were the yeah. ones who were having to yell at the venue staff when they tried to stop hydrating everybody. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that we're not privy to. I guess yeah. I was not planning to go to RailsConf this year because RubyConf last November was awesome, but the past RailsConf wasn't that great. And so I was like, I need to be convinced to go. And I am excited about this hack day now. So I guess what I'm looking for is for the people who are like me, who are like, eh, kind of burnt out on RubyConf or RailsConf. That's who I'm looking to encourage to go. 
why should I go if I'm kind of feeling like, eh, past few ones haven't really been hitting the spot for me. And they don't feel like I've gotten as much technical knowledge per se that I need to kind of come back with, make it worth it for my company. I think that's key is in the CFP, I specifically encouraged on other podcasts that I don't prefer, but I did go on first. It's I, all right. It's fine. It's not all right. <laughs> that's for that. It's, it's not all right. Audio medium, but you can't see how sad Jason looks. So I was specifically encouraging gritty technical talks. Like I want that. That's something I always look for from Brighton Talks is it's not going to store all of the information in your brain, but it should at least give you the, hey, do you know what? We should try that. And hopefully the hack day also gives us an opportunity to do some of that as well. So yeah, all I can tell you is that my feeling about the over-programming potentially of previous events, I felt the same. And often it depends on the year for me. Some years I'm like, oh, four tracks, this is all lined up. I'm hitting that talk in that track and that talk in that track, or I'm going to spend all day in this track because I'm not interested in that. I don't do React. That's not my thing, but it is loads of other people's thing. So I've had that and I felt last year the little physical venue didn't help. The physical venue in terms of the layout of the venue didn't involve moving through the space. And so that's why I wanted to go to Detroit, see the conference space, make sure that we had a good feel of the event as we move around. And we're trying to shift around some of the bookings to see if we can change a couple of rooms that were booked. These things get booked years in advance. I didn't pick Detroit. Detroit was picked two and a half years ago by people who aren't with Ruby Central anymore. So the reasons why are always lost to the past when these big events, because you have to book the hotel and you have to book this conference center and all that stuff. So yeah, I wanted to see it. I wanted to make sure it would work. The hotel is very short walk along the seafront over the tunnel to Canada. So I mean, if it all goes horribly wrong, you can escape to Canada. Hell yeah. Detroit. So there's also that bonus. You actually, you can see Canada and it's to the south. This is things I didn't know about Detroit. So Canada wow. to the south of Detroit over the river. And also Detroit is nothing like the film Robocop. And also, as far as I'm aware, nothing like the film 8 Mile. My two Detroit touch points before I went there. I feel like Shame. 8 Mile is a pretty good bar. <laughs> like great, great movies, not great necessarily movie. places I want to visit for a tech conference. No, I've Hold seen on. some great YouTube documentaries on 9 Mile. You should check out 9 Mile next. Okay. This is where I'm afraid your Stonehenge information came from as well, is these documentaries. <laughs> I was raised on YouTube, dude. YouTube is true, right? Everything. Did you know the Statue of Liberty is in Montreal? I thought it was in Vegas. I mean, it is also in it Vegas. Is actually. Oh. It is. I've seen a piece of the Statue of Liberty in Berlin that was still copper, which is awesome. It was in a World War II bunker that got converted into a discotheque and then got converted into an art museum. It was pretty sweet. It was like eight foot thick concrete walls or something. Great place to have nightclub. Yeah. If you're like most devs, too much of your time gets sucked up with downtime issues, troubleshooting, and error tracking. How can you spend more time shipping code and less time putting out fires? Honey Badger is how. It's a suite of monitoring tools, especially for devs. It's the only system that combines error monitoring, uptime tracking, cron and heartbeat monitoring into a single clean, fast interface. Sure, you could get familiar with any interface, but why waste your time learning some Franken system interface that looks like an airline cockpit when what you need is clarity and speed? You won't know if Honey Badger will really save you time and trouble until you see how it works in your own tool chain. With two lines of code and five minutes, you can see for yourself. Honey Badger automatically hooks into popular web frameworks, job systems, authentication libraries, and front-end JavaScript. Imagine fixing errors before your users could even report them. Five minutes of your time with a free trial is all it will take to see if it works for you. It just might be the best five minutes you've spent in a while. Check it out at honeybadger.io. Though we have drifted significantly from why I should go to Detroit for RailsConf, <laughs> your kind of gritty underground cool bunker thing actually is a little bit of the Detroit vibe. So I ventured out in the snow on the day I was there before everyone else arrived and wandered around Detroit looking at things just to try and get a sense of the downtown because part of going to one of these things is you do tend to get out in the city. Really good food, excellent bars and interesting places to go. It's quite a small downtown. It's like a relatively compact downtown that's very close to the hotel and the conference center. I think Detroit itself is fairly sprawling because it's the motor city. So like roads is kind of a thing, even for an American city. But the downtown itself is 
pretty interesting. I ate incredibly well for the two days I was there. That's another good reason to go. I was just about to ask what the restaurant scene around the area was like. It's good. I did some internet research before I got there and a nice lady from Visit Detroit who took us to this amazing Italian. And then as we were walking around, she was like, you should go there. And I was like, okay, that one is on my list. Excellent. Good. And she said, and you should go there. I was like, that one's not on my list. On my phone, I have 50 places I could go and eat within five blocks. We're going to need that list. Yeah, Yeah. we need the list. Well, she's saying this Italian place is good, and it was a place called Olive Garden because mm. I don't so know when you're how. in Detroit, your family. <laughs> um, he didn't say five class dining. <laughs> Even the Brit knows that this is you. Sabaros, Michelin of Italian. <laughs> this poor woman, I don't know. She's probably like 250 years old. Wrote this article one time. It was like an Olive Garden or something like that. Came to her city, and she wrote a like restaurant review on it. Oh my got roasted. I felt so bad for the last 10 years that I've known that. Yeah. These were not chain restaurants as far as I was aware. They're certainly nice. the ones on my list. There's no McDonald's. Burger <laughs> King. There's none of that. Is there it's, at uh, least a Popeye's nearby? I don't know. Popeye's I'll, is I'll chicken, right? Popeye's is chicken. Does it go that far north? There's one in Brighton, actually. There's the one Popeyes here. Popeye's is open so in Brighton. Kind of so, so you can come to there's Brighton one in and Brighton. Popeye's if you're desperate. Yeah, surely. How often do you eat Popeyes a week? Recently or historically? <laughs> yes. Well, there's a dude that works the drive through and as long as I peel out, he gives me free stuff. So recently... Wait, 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 wait. We got to go back there. Do you have to circle back after you peel out to get the free no. stuff? Or is this his way says, of creating a way... Hey, bro, do a burnout back. or hey, bro, gun it for me. And he'll throw me like some free chicken. The other day, like, he, literally he gave me, throw it. He Tom Brady's like, it into my window. This cannot be real. Part of it. Uh, a, you need the GoPro for this. I don't want to mess up my man's spot and mess up my chicken. Because if he's next time you come back, if you peel out, I'll give you chicken. That man needs to be working like customer attention for a SaaS company because that's amazing. He's giving me the free stuff. He's saying, yo, bro, I want you to do a burnout. And then I throw you an extra piece of chicken. This is like negotiation as it's happening. But is it on and the go I, if it happens every time? Well, he's not there. He likes time. burnouts. Yeah. He likes reckless driving. What can I say? Do you like text him? I'm coming down. Get my yeah, free chicken ready. Get the, no, yeah, get the free that, huh? chicken ready. So let's try and convince him I'm Vin Diesel. All right. Well, then as long as you wear a wife beater, we can roll through. Talking about, and i see you again. No? Did yeah. you see that Fast yeah, and Furious movie? Yeah. Fast I, I haven't <laughs> You know, if Aaron Francis listened to this, he'd be stoked right now. Does Aaron like to do burnouts? He likes Fast and Furious series. Oh. The last Fast and Furious movie was Dogwater. Very angry about it, but we should move on. All right. Back to RailsCon. Right. Welcome to Remote Tangents. I've been off work all week. I haven't talked to Jason in a while. We could get crazy here, but I'm going to try to steer us back. What are some things to do in Detroit? I mean, I will be mostly eating. Free, this is free chicken, answer. or will you pay for the? We'll pay for all of my meals, and I will not have a vehicle in which I could <laughs> do what burnout. Yeah, it's, car has a little mode on it called burnout mode, where it locks the front tires and okay. spins the wheel. That's what I was confused on because, like, the only way for you to really do that is to actually like drive off. But if you're just no, sitting there, no, my then... car has a burnout mode, dude. If I throw that thing in sport mode, See, dude, it has a Jason, whole mode you're supposed to use on a track and I use that thing off the track all the time. That's what I was confused like, about. See, Jason didn't get the right minivan so he doesn't have yeah, that Yeah, you don't have burnout mode on the minivan. You got the Wi-Fi. Front wheel not drive, the so it just locks the back tires <laughs> and then just spins the front. <laughs> like rears up. You just get up. a big flat spot on your back tires. <laughs> it just drags the car along. <laughs> slow. It's for child safety. Burnout Good is job steering it back, Andrew. Thanks. Steer. Ha. Going back to the conference stuff, that whole where people go after the day of the conference is like a critical part of the conference experience. So it's important to put the time into that so that like in San Diego, we were at a resort, which is fine if you were at the resort, but you couldn't walk anywhere at RubyConf to... You could was, yeah, if you were willing yeah, to was, die. We walked under a very sketchy bridge to dinner one night. You pretty much had to uber everywhere which was annoying because it was like it's fine and we had a couple restaurants at the resort but if you're there for four days i don't want to eat here again yeah that's like a critical piece of the whole 
conference experience. So it's important to think about that and then have the recommendations for people to go here or there and whatever's in walking distance and that stuff. Yeah, there's plenty in walking distance. As a traditional at the Ruby Central things, the hotel bar is sufficiently large and stays open sufficiently late so we can all sit there and, in my case, very slowly nurse one or two drinks. <laughs> the hotel itself is it's in the tallest building in Detroit. It's in one of those incredibly confusing American hotel buildings that I don't understand as a European. But the hotel and the hotel bar are accessible and there's a bunch of like GM cars in the basement and there's a little food court in it if you're desperate for a quick lunch. But there's, People there's, manufacturing there's like, cars. And... Yeah, there's literally like 20 cars in the basement because it's the GM headquarters as well. So, Wow. How many elevators? There are eight elevators for the hotel. Excellent. How many um, bathrooms? <laughs> Regularly, there is one per room, I believe. This is what happens when you answer all the real questions on the other podcast. You get, yeah. <laughs> we're over here scrounging. What kind of glasses on the bathroom now? <laughs> so what I think they did really well at Rails World, they had built-in socializing time. The food was really good. And they had a specific place for you to go to do that so people couldn't just sprawl out. Is there going to be yeah. kind of something, an area like that where people can kind of congregate Yes. I had the weird experience of going and having a tasting lunch inside the conference center kitchen. So we only have a part of the conference center. We've got sort of like the nice bit with the ballroom and some smaller rooms and a beautiful atrium that is right next to the river. And then the rest of the conference does have those big car parky conference hall things that go on for like a block. So they can obviously cater enormous amounts, this catering kitchen. And inside the catering kitchen is a beautifully set up round table in a made up room that you can see like the industrial kitchen. And the chef came in and served us various tasting menus and it's all really good food. Conference food often is a bit forgettable or people only remark on it if it's bad. And I can definitely, the enormous lunch that I had, I was right to skip breakfast that day, is really good. And so uh, one of the Ruby Central folks is putting together the menu for that. In terms of there being places to go afterwards, definitely we're looking at venues for any sort of speaker drinks or any other sort of get togethers. As for wider, bigger party things, I don't know what we're doing yet. That stuff tends to come together a bit later, as I understand it, for these big events, because it comes down to the number of people. We're not going to be able to accommodate everyone who goes to RailsConf in one venue, but there'll be a happy hour at the venue in the atrium. There'll be food, there'll be coffee, all of those things. Having the professional event woman who is really switched on is really going to help with the mechanics of the day. I'm not going to have to worry about that other than go, we're going to have enough coffee, right? And she will nod at me and go, of course, we will have enough coffee, Andrew. So that makes that bit of the job easier, particularly as I'm doing this from the wrong country. Does she call you Andrew? No, she doesn't. She calls me Andy. I'm not in trouble with her. So (laughs) save that for your spouse. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She doesn't call me either of those things. Much ruder. (laughs) This is a bit of a self-serving question, but every year we go to RailsConf or RubyConf, we record podcasts. We do it as a thing with the conference, or is there going to be any sort of spot like that? Because Julie and I posted up in a very, very dark back corner at RubyConf San Diego. Yes, we would love to talk to you about that. Julie is on the program committee, so I'm sure we can make this happen. That's the key thing. Like I know the boo that RailsWorld was very nice. The glass case of emotion, as I like to think about it. Um, the sauna. It was four <laughs> men after one beer and a two days of conferencing. It was not not smelly. There was an aroma say. in that room for yeah, it was, sure. It's good we kept the door open for some of it. But yeah, no, that's something I'd love to do. Obviously, like podcasting is a big part of our community as a sort of weird volunteer community media, isn't it? That seems to be one of the things that the Rubyists do is to chat about stuff. Yeah. What are you most excited about or like proud of for RailsConf? I think it's just a really nice idea. What's interesting, so RailsConf has been going on for 20 years. It's been going as long as Rails has. And Ruby Central sort of came into existence almost by accident to sort of run it, to have a commercial entity to do stuff with. And also Ruby Central is responsible for RubyGems and for Bundler. And that stuff is not free. So it came to be that the events were making money and that money then got put into the infrastructure that we all use every day. So it's almost like they came in like an accidental events company. Now they have more strings to their bow. They merge with Ruby together. And so there's more of a sponsorship of a steward of the Ruby Commons or 
the open source frameworks that we use and all that stuff. So the events are a string to their bow now. And RubyGems was started at a RailsConf. There was a time before RubyGems. People used to send zip files to each other. This is obviously pre-GitHub as well. So RubyGems was started at one of these things. And I quite like that the hack day itself is a chance for stuff like that to happen. I have a project that I want to work on there. I want to get the first Ruby friend thing, not being a spreadsheet and to being like a Rails app because I get behind. So I would really love to like grab a couple of folks and just work on that together. It's a chance to work with people you wouldn't get a chance to work with. I know Andrew and Jason have the joy of each other's company in the workday. Jason's not smiling. I've weird. never once worked with Jason at Podium. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we hardly talk at work. No. <laughs> and when it sent him memes, though. Okay, well, I mean, that's close to work. But it's a chance to spend some time maybe working with someone who you haven't had a chance to work with, but you've always fancied it, right? You met at a previous event or you've met online. Like, that's a really good idea. We should build that thing. That's the sort of Rails app we could try and do in a day. Why not? And, you know, and we'll bring you food and we'll bring you coffee and lunch and all that stuff and you can just code away and we'll bring you power and it'll be good right so um i'm kind of hoping that that's kind of a big sort of celebration in a different way like rails world felt like a celebration of the longevity of rails and a man that did such an amazing job with that thing she brought all of her background and integrated herself into our community so well and i think this can be a celebration as well of that longevity but in a different way with more of a focus on building and coding with each other i think obviously rails world had a very what Rails core sort of launching. There was quite a lot of new stuff and it was like there was a lot of here's solid queue, here's this, here's that. This is how we're going to do this from now on. And I think there'll be more of a wider variety of talks for the big tent of Rails. I'm not a React and Rails shop, but I know lots of folks are. So there'll probably be a couple of talks for people who've done that across the different databases that we all use. There'll be lots of opportunity to see how people take bits of the framework or use the framework differently, or there are Rails adjacent gems and things like that, Rails adjacent technologies that we can use that aren't sort of the pure Rails way. And I think you'll definitely get a bit more of that Rails conf than you would do at a Rails world. But yeah, that celebration and the hack day and the getting your hands on keyboards and making cool stuff, because that's why we're here, right? At RubyConf, I really liked the hack day. I didn't really participate, but I really liked the hack day at RubyConf. And it sounds like it's not going to be as project focused as it was last RubyConf, where at RubyConf, a lot of projects came, the Ruby LSP, and they kind of set up shop in an area and they had like signs like here, you can come here if you want to work on the LSP. It doesn't sound like it's going to be as much project focused, but I will say one thing that happened at RubyConf that if y'all do that again, is some people's projects were kind of too close to each other. So you had a really, really popular project here and someone else sitting right beside them for their project and it wasn't really clear. And then some people didn't really get any people come to their stuff because of that. So if y'all do are doing something like that, where if you're working on a project, you're like, hey, you guys can come to this area to work on this project. It would be good to make sure those are separated so that it's clear. I think it was definitely an experiment. Ruby Conf, and I think the folks who were organizing that learned a bunch of things about how they would do that again. And I think purely from the fact that RailsConf is generally a bigger event than RubyConf, I imagine some of those projects will show up again. The Ruby LSP is great. I have installed, there's like moves to get the Rails LSP on top of that. So that would seem like an obvious project for some folks to work on. Even if it's just like a couple of people from it come here and get it installed and working on your VS Code. That's a useful thing for that project to get more people using it. So I think there'll be a real variety purely because of the numbers and how we organize that and surface all of those things will be a challenge. I'll probably a mix of digital and in person, but we've got a couple of folks on the program committee who are going to take pure responsibility for that hack day. So there's a couple of folks on that, a couple of folks on workshops, which will be happening on that second day and some folks on the tracks. Hopefully we have enough volunteer horsepower to do this and do it well. Y'all need more volunteers? Always. Well, if there's are you, a place are you, are you, are you, are you volunteering now? Volu- <laughs> no, no. But <laughs> if there's a place that we can send people who want to volunteer, we can put a link to that in the show notes because I'm sure several of our listeners would be definitely interested in volunteering. That's how the program committee was picked. You email Ruby Central and say, look, I'm willing to give up my time. I can do this. I can do that. What is Ruby Central's yeah. email? There's a RailsConf rubycentral.org. Andy at rubycentral.org will last until May the 10th when I will turn it off and never look at it again because I think this might be one and done for me. There What's goes the next question. <laughs> what was your next question? You think you'll do this past this Rails yeah, car? Yeah. I had to explain to my spouse in many words why this was definitely a good idea. 
even as I wasn't totally sure it was a good idea. So obviously I've got Brighton Ruby that I run everywhere, every year anyway, which is in June. And I was quite looking forward to a year where I wasn't planning to try and put a talk. I was deliberately told myself in January the 1st, I'm like, no talks this year, just go and enjoy it. Just take part, I said to myself. Well, you are. You're taking a big part of Rails Conf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm very bad at saying no to stuff. So, uh, What's been the hardest part? Saying so no far. to stuff. It's a different scale to what I'm used to. Brian Ruby is very much, I know exactly what that thing is. I've sort of refined it every year and it's one personable. This thing is not and it's big. And there are things that I normally like to do if I'm organizing an event. Like I like to pick a venue. Like That's quite fun. And that was already chosen for me. Also timescales, right? So I had tickets on sale for Brighton Ruby since November last year, because that's just how I do it. I spread my Brighton Ruby work through the year. We put tickets on sale for RailsConf as I came onto it. So everything is bigger in America. Yeah. What's been the most surprising yeah. part of planning a conference at this scale? I did know, but it's the interactions with the venue are like incredibly litigious in a way that I hadn't understood. It's just an entire new set of problems that I don't understand. It's incredibly unionized in a way that I just didn't get. I know I have at previous stuff in the US. I've just wanted to move a sofa because I was just an attendee at an event and I wanted to move a sofa from this place to this place to make a little area. And they're like, don't touch that. We'll get someone to move that for you. But I'm a man in his prime. I can move a sofa on my own. Well, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, that was new to me. Break your back. Who are you going to (laughs) sue? That's who they're worried about. What do you have appreciation more for now that you're doing like a Rails conf? from the organizer perspective? Everyone's volunteering. There's literally no money in this. RailsConf exists primarily to raise money for the infrastructure that we use every day. It was a source of funding. I don't have a sense of how many hours that people are putting into this. The program committee of volunteers, all of the board of Ruby Central are volunteers. There's a couple of paid members of staff at Ruby Central. It's their full-time job, but they're also doing a bunch of other stuff that isn't the conference. So yeah, it's the amount of time and love and effort that people put into it. And that's really great to see. And the speakers as well, right? No one's in this for the money. Everyone's in this for the community and the happiness and the joy and the good vibe. So yeah, I mean, I feel that about Brighton Ruby as well. I feel that about all of the smaller conferences as well, like the Blue Ridges and the Southeast Rubies. Jason's shaking his head. And all the small European ones, like the Friendlies and the Helveticas and all that stuff. One of the great things about community, because other programming communities aren't like this. They're not quite as community-ish. They're not quite as friendly. So that's what I really like about it. That's why I keep saying yes to stuff because I'm a sucker for the emotional stuff. Is there a specific mark that you personally are trying to leave on this conference? This is the thing that I made happen. Big British flag. Big British flag? Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm to stop you throwing any tea in the river. And that's basically what I've got. No one's been able to stop me yet. I also want to throw chicken at you as you drive off. That is acceptable. As long as you let me know so I can attempt to catch it, because I love chicken, specifically when it's been fried. You guys got anything else? Is it or is it not Popeye's as the lunches for every meal? Unfortunately, we have to cover our vegetarian beyond uh, Well, see? If you just want to eat chicken, you just go ahead, Andrew. All right. Bet. <laughs> have we successfully convinced Jason's wife to let him go? That's yeah, the real the key, key here. Get her in here now. All right, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, he's doing it. Right, guys, you have to help me be charming now. Just be British. Yeah, Stonehenge. Just remember no, Stonehenge. Now's not the time to ask. Just we'll, <laughs> okay. we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Children running amok, I can only imagine. God, I opened the door woman. and made eye contact with her and I knew it was up. Okay. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. Sh- shall I leave her an audio message? The problem I run into is the Podia retreats the next week. So oh, you're right. If I go, it's going to be like I fly in the morning it starts and I fly out the afternoon it ends. I've done that before. Just go uh, straight to uh, Vermont. Okay. I think you're missing the point. We can go uh, snowboarding all week. He's definitely missing Why don't the point. He is. I'm sure Why she'll you, love to hear this. Great sales pitching. Memphis between RailsConf and Podia retreat. Maybe. Is well, John Moran still there? Yeah, man. He's I'm not too afraid. Right now. I can't go. He's I'm injured. Sorry. He's injured. Trigger fingers ready, bro. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Is there anything else that you kind of want to leave people with who are maybe still on the fence? You should come. It will be good. I no. promise. A British oh. man said so. Oh, 
Not the British promise. I mean, unfortunately, British promises are not the international diplomatic currency that they used to be. But this guy, his promises are. So yeah, we will absolutely do our best. And it's a good way to both get something from and give something back to the community. So I think it's a really good event. So are you going to get Jamie there? Because that's going to be a big determination for me. I am trying. There we go. Jamie's there. I'll be there. I follow him like a shadow. Yeah, he said that. his tweets. He doesn't really tweet anymore, though. He's more of an I know. He's only had now. two in the past month. Dude, every time Jamie tweets, it goes into a Google sheet. Watch out. You'll be next. <laughs> is I'm, he serious or is he? No, he is serious. Okay. I'm scared to death that one day I'm going to find out what goes on in Andrew's mind and his computer and his personal life, like what really happens and that he'll have to kill me. You need have several degrees to be able to handle that information, bro. Advanced degrees, higher education, dude. Graduate college. All right. I don't have any other questions. I mean, in all seriousness, is there anything, obviously we've covered some of your issues with previous things. Are there things that we shouldn't mess with? Are there things that need messing with that we haven't talked about? Biggest thing for me is the talks. I can't justify to my employer that it's worth my time if there's not talks that I'm going to learn information from. You're going to find a way. Well, I can sell shit to a toilet stain. There we go. There we go. I used to work at a place where we had to justify like, this is the reason why it's okay and the company should be okay with me doing this. So I'm thinking about those people's perspective. Yeah. Of, I have to prove to my company it's worth my time and theirs to allow me to go to this. I want the program to come together to be valuable on its own. And then all of the other stuff that you get from going to a conference is the bonus ice cream on top. A good solid set of talks makes up for a lot of other stuff. But it sounds like you're thinking of everything else. I struggle with Atlanta. It didn't help that some sponsors pulled out too. And so like you walked in the sponsorship area and it felt empty. I don't know. Those types of things, those types of events, they paint a picture of Rails as a whole, for Mm -hmm. better or for worse. And so when you go there, it's very easy to be like, oh, Rails isn't what it used to be. And so that's why Rails World was like, okay, it's not so bad. I've not said this kind of stuff out loud because like, I like Ruby Central and I've always liked Ruby Central. Ruby Central is the whole reason I even started talking at conferences. Mm. So I want to see Ruby Central succeed. I'm trying to find the balance of being honest that RailsConf the last couple of years was a bummer. As honest as I'd be, I meant what I said earlier when I said you and Ufu joining really, really made me think I've got to like see if I can make it work because mm. I have so much respect for both of you. Respect for Ufuk. I'm also there. I knew you would do that. I'm a British. You can't be nice to me. All if right, you could just start being nice I'd to him. Much prefer is that why Jamie rude, doesn't rude. like me? The highest measure of respect and admiration is if he's rude to you. Sweet. Oh, oh no. I'm glad to he's recontextualize nice to your boss's relationship. Don't, don't say that, dude. He's going to go through the motions. <laughs> oh no. I'm not going to be on remote Ruby for like another six months because I'm just going to be thinking about this. It's both a podcast and therapy. That's how I think of the show. I miss Brittany being around. Me too. Yes. I've seen that yesterday. She made that podcast happen at RailsConf last year. That was a lot of fun. She made that happen. And Brittany was always just so good at bringing people together. I hope she's getting the rest that she needs now from doing all that. But I just want to say I miss Brittany. She's mm-hmm. like fantastic with the Ruby community. She put in the hard yards Agreed. for a number of years. To be clear, she's happy. I texted her the other day. She's like, that's great. (laughs) That's great. That made it sound like I miss Brittany when she died. She didn't die. She's she just stopped doing a podcast. That's all. That's why I said I hope she's getting the rest she needs because she like she she got off Twitter and everything, giving herself a break and absolutely yeah, yeah, sensible to do so. You can still miss her when they do that though. I still miss her. Yeah, she's what I consider the gold standard of podcast interviews. She's so good at that. And we're over here like, what's the square root? Of grass. How many bathrooms are there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with that we didn't ask you about, Andy? Or I don't know, anything on your mind? Anything you want to ask Andrew? I have had more answers to questions I didn't ask on this podcast than I thought I was going to get. Good. You're Can welcome. we get that as a review on the Yeah, we need that on podcast, iTunes. Please. <laughs> Three and a half stars. Engraved. More answers than I wanted. <laughs> you need to put Andrew that front and center on the website. Andrew always gives me a hard time because I hold on to this review that says five minutes and nothing. But it's more like 25. Honestly, 
30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's, it's like 45 to 50 minutes. <laughs> Give us the full credit we deserve. <laughs> That's what I'm upset about. <laughs> Two stars. Give us the one star. Please don't do that if you're listening. But if you are listening, you should rate us five stars right now because that really helps the podcast. Anyway, we don't know if that really helps the podcast or not, like that's it does. That's what other podcasts Tim Apple say. Decides. Yeah, I've been all in my iTunes analytics recently. Andrew just threw finger guns. We're not allowed to carry firearms, personally. So we no, have the right to bear arms. No bears. <laughs> no bears either. No bears. That's what we learned today. I'll write that down. We do have Stonehenge, so that is good. No bears in Stonehenge. In Ireland. Stonehenge is not in Ireland, apparently. <laughs> Over here in Brighton, Ireland. Oh, okay. It's totally worth anymore. coming back, wasn't it, Jason? You see, you feel in, invigorated. It feels something. Well, at least you feel something. Yeah, feel you're welcome. Of, oh, <laughs> I'll never, never not take an opportunity to make a an overtly sarcastic American freedom joke. So, Andrew coming back with the bears really got me bears Andrew sent me an american eagle magnet with the flag on it last year for christmas nice your fridge is now free is it you should see the people that come to my house I'm like why do you have this on your fridge it's america are you all right Andrew? no dude that fridge running away mm-hmm. joke got me there's a family guy skit where he's like hey is your fridge running the guy's like no He's like, is your doors unlocked? And then the fridge kicks in the door. It beats up Peter. <laughs> and I'm just thinking that every time I think about the fridge being oh. on, I think about the fridge coming in and beating me up. <laughs> it's a fantastic visual. How can people get in contact with you, Andy? Where can people find what you're doing online? You can head to andycroll.com where my newsletter is. And I now have a banner ad for RailsConf because it's apparently 1997. Did you charge them for the banner ad? I should have done, but I didn't. I just feel like I want to make this a success. And I have a couple of articles that do well. Well, certainly I visit my own blog for things I've forgotten on a fairly regular basis. So at least I will get a ticket for RailsConf. Also, Andy Kroll on Ruby Social and Twitter, if you're on either of those things. What is and one not, thing that you want to leave people with? And not Andy at rubycentral.org if it's after May 9th. Come to RailsConf. It's going to be really fun. Honest. There you go. Welcome to Pathway. Check in, connect, check your order. Yo, I'll have a 16 piece chicken family meal, 18 biscuits, three chicken sandwiches, a kid sized lemonade, Yo, then. Yo, Andrew, is that you? Yo, chicken bro. Yo, bro, do a burnout and I'll throw you a free piece of chicken. Ride or die, am I right? Hell yeah. Light him up. Yeah.